Greetings, Scott County Scholars. This is Mr. Bragoon. I'll be your guide for this lecture covering the Russian Revolution, which brings us uh, in the transition from the Russian Empire ruled over by the Romanov dynasty to the Soviet Union, which is actually the world's first Soviet society created on the ideas of, of Karl Marx that you learn about in your Isms lecture there that accompanied the uh, Industrial Revolution. So let's go uh, and let's have a little bit of a look at the background here uh, of uh, Imperial Russia there under the Romanov dynasty. And we're going to start with this gentleman here. He's actually the last uh, Romanov ruler here, or czar, uh, known as Nicholas II. Um, the Romanov uh, dynasty began in the early 1600s. It's going to run uh, until the 1917 here when, when Nicholas abdicates. Um, throughout this time period, the form of government they have is called an autocracy, which means rule by one person. That would be the czar in this case. Uh, now, the czar is aided in his um, governing of Russia uh, by a bureaucracy that is set up by him, largely peopled by uh, Russian aristocrats, um, but also uh, the um, the czars are increasingly using a group of people known as the secret police um, to uh, get rid of any enemies that might be interested in usurping their throne. Um, people anywhere from uh, liberal Democrats who are interested in instituting democratic reforms, uh, socialists, communists, uh, anarchists, uh, and even pretenders to the throne that would say that uh, Nicholas or one of his predecessors were um, not the rightful heirs and that they were. Um, in this in this milieu here, we have uh, an event that uh, um, in 1905, which which weakens considerably the authority and the power and the prestige of the Russian autocracy and the Russian Tsar, and that is the Russo-Japanese War. Um, as you know, uh, the Russian Empire had been uh, ever expanding east um, in search of uh, resources, but also in search of warm water ports um, from which to access the rest of the world there. Um, in their pushing east there into the far east of Asia there, they met up with the um, Japanese Empire that was new and also looking for uh, a land empire in Asia. Uh, in this conflict here, we have a newly but quickly industrialized Japan, uh, which um, resoundly beats the Russians in this war in 1905. Um, it's a black black eye for the Russian autocracy. It's a black eye for the Russian military. Um, the Russian military is poorly led. Um, the Russian citizens are not interested in sending their sons and their husbands off to a war that is poorly executed, um, and it dimin diminishes um, the, um, the power and the prestige significantly of the autocracy. And this leads to political instability, and there's a, 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 um, uh, a revolt in the streets. Um, and one of the um, outcomes of that is that uh, Nicholas is going to um, reinstitute an old tradition called the Duma, which is the Russian word for house. Um, which is an elected body that is to advise his decisions um, with kind of a, a to placate the people there. However, uh, it's clear that the autocracy in um, Russia has been weakened and that possibly its days are numbered. Um, oh, uh, real quick uh, world history nerd note here um, the peace between the Russians and the Japanese was brokered by none other than Teddy Roosevelt, American president there. Um, just wanted you to know that. Um, okay, uh, the real underlying problems in Russia at this time uh, is basically poverty. Um, although uh, serfdom was, was uh, outlawed in Russia in 1861, um, the social and economic condition of the vast majority of Russians is remains rather unchanged. Um, you can compare that again to America here, is that um, in America, slavery was outlawed, especially in the South after 1865. However, um, as you know, in 20th century America, especially early 20th century America, um, African Americans' um, uh, economic and social standing hadn't risen much 
since 1865. Um, the vast majority of Russians um, still are um, poor peasants who work on, uh, in agricultural jobs. Um, the lifespan is very short. In fact, in this time in Russia, Russian women are uh, marrying men much younger than they are in the hopes that the men will um, live as long as they do. Um, in terms of the economy, uh, Russia is, even though they, they came very late to the industrial boom here in the second wave of, in, of, of industrialization here, um, they are largely a uh, agricultural society with very little industry, especially compared um, to their uh, European counterparts. So we have a, a very poor, um, uh, very uh, uneducated and uh, unindustrialized society here at the beginning of the 20th century. We're going to see this change a lot in the next 30, 40 years. Um, this gentleman right here is an interesting character. There's a lot that's made of Rasputin and his role in, in the Russian Revolution. And, and I just want to preface this by saying that the social factors of, of the uh, – and um, um, some of the, the other leading roles, such as women, had a, a much bigger impact uh, than this gentleman here. But he does serve to further discredit the Romanov dynasty, and this is how. Uh, Rasputin is a mystic kind of gentleman. Uh, that, that means basically that he breaks from the tradition of the Orthodox clergy and, um, and, and has kind of a, a more esoteric um, take on, on spiritualism. And, and healing here, um, and apparently he heals um, the Tsar's son who had hemophilia, which was important because he was later supposed to be the heir to the throne. Um, anyways, because he can influence or heal the, the, the son of the, um, the, the, the Tsar there, he has great influence over the royal family. Um, this influence is largely is uh, uh, negative for them because he has a reputation as a uh, party boy, which doesn't fly very well in a very conservative society like Russia. Um, and this basically serves as a, uh, his influence, this party boy's influence over the um, royal family basically serves as a rumor mill. Um, it creates all types of rumors around the royal family, further discrediting and, and, and um, um, bringing the prestige of the royal uh, family down further. Um, Russia's um, involvement in World War One is, is going to be the, the, the uh, it's going to be the last straw that breaks the camel's back here. Uh, of course, Russia. We are know already. Russia came to the aid of, of um, their Slavic brothers, the Serbians, when they were um, attacked by the uh, the Austrians and, and their by um, through the uh, web of entangling alliances, ended up at war with Germany as well. Um, Russia was very ill prepared to fight a, a, a modern European style war, um, just the same way they were ill prepared to fight the Russo-Japanese war. Um, again, the, the, their lack of industrialization is going to um, it's going to hurt them. Um, and their lack of uh, transportation infrastructure is going to hurt them as well. Um, total war, all right, which is something that's going to be new here, is going to be not only uh, what total war means is uh, basically uh, the, the uh, your opponent's military is not the only target. Um, your opponent's civilians are also targets as well. What this means is that um, basically everybody in Russia is going to have to be working to help sustain the war effort. Um, however, um, the Russian economy cannot sustain the war effort, which means that something's got to give, either the war effort or people starving at home. Um, unfortunately, um, for the Russian autocracy, um, both gave out um, because they didn't play it very well. Um, I would also like to add here um, that uh, Russia, although it pulled out early from the uh, First World War in 1917, um, still sustained the largest amount of casualties in the war, despite not being in the war for um, the entire war. Um, uh, in the in the midst of the chaos of the of the, uh, of the Russian 
army um, collapsing on, on the, on the uh, front there and um, people starving at home. Um, urban um, industrial workers form Soviets, which are uh, small um, self-governing bodies um, to govern the, the, the – largely it's to, to govern either uh, like an economic uh, – like a factory or something like that, and in some cases um, uh, municipal areas there. Um, but these Soviets are going to take control over some key, um, key elements of Russian society. Uh, which is going to prove um, very um, important um, for the events that happened here in 1917. So let's look at those. Um, there are actually two revolutions, two Russian revolutions in 1917. In February, there are food riots in the city because, again, people are starving. Russia and Russia's economy cannot sustain the war effort. The Tsar is forced to abdicate. Okay. Um, but he abdicates, actually, to a provisional government headed by this gentleman down here, Alexander Kerensky. Um, and this provisional government is based on the Duma, which is an elected legislature that was meant to advise the, um, the Tsar. Now that elected legislature is uh, going to make decisions um, ruling uh, that are, are enforced by the government here. And uh, the, um, the provisional government makes a very bad decision right off the bat, and that bad decision is to um, continue the war against Germany, which is wildly unpopular and which is causing the starvation of, of many Russians. So, in fact, the main reason why these Russians um, were, were rioting uh, is, uh, was not addressed by this provisional government, which leaves an opportunity for the second revolution here, the October Revolution. Uh, which is headed by communists from these um, Soviets um, and also um, some exiled political leaders such as this gentleman, um, Vladimir Lenin. Um, these um, Bolsheviks take control with a military coup uh, over the provisional government, and um, Vladimir Lenin returns, I believe. Uh, maybe he took a train from Finland or Germany, I'm not quite sure. He was exiled for a while. He returns to, um, to Russia, um, and he promptly um, removes Russia from the, from the war in the Treaty of Brest, uh, Litovsk. Um, in this treaty uh, with the Germans, the Russians lose considerable parts of their empire, uh, what is now parts of the Baltic, uh, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, uh, parts of Ukraine. Ruthenia, which is part of Ukraine again. Uh, let's see here, Romania, and um, maybe some other places. But large tracts of, of Russia are lost. But the reason why um, Lenin takes Russia out of the war is because um, the Russians don't want to be in that war. And furthermore, communists are not interested in that war because that is a war among nations. And the communists are interested in a struggle of proletariats versus bourgeois, okay? Um, how did this gentleman come into power so quickly? Well, very easily. He offered what the people wanted. The people wanted peace. They didn't want to be at war any longer. The peasants that were so poor wanted their own land. And then the starving people, of course, wanted bread. This was his April thesis, right? Give them what they want. Man of the people. Bolshevism um, is, a, is a, an intellectual idea here uh, about communism um, that believes basically Bol Bolshevism is, uh, comes from the um, Bolshoi or you know Bar the w Russian word like you know the majority okay and there was two factions of Russian communists and the majority here led by Lenin um, believed that they needed a vanguard to lead the revolution that communism could be forced on a society even if there were not a proletariat to make communism happen. In other words, Karl Marx said that, hey, you've got to have an urban proletariat to make a communist revolution. The problem is Russia doesn't have a very large urban proletariat. They have a lot of agrarian peasants that haven't reached that stage yet. Bolsheviks say it doesn't matter. We can force it to happen, and that that's the best course 
on the on the on the uh, road to a better society through communism. Okay, so the concept, this concept of forcing the revolution, is known as Bolshevism. Um, con in, on the other side of this, in, in the communist camp, were the Mensheviks, which means literally the minorities, um, who thought that uh, gradual um, progression to communism through a capitalistic stage was um, was the best way. Of course, they all died. Um, the results here of the um, of the communist or Bolshevik takeover of, of the Russian uh, state was civil war in Russia from 1917 until the early 1920s, um, depending on what part of Russia you were in. It pitted the Reds of the Bolsheviks again. Remember that red from the from the uh, from the uh, third estate there, versus the White Russians or people who were, remained loyal to the idea of a of a, uh, a royal family. Um, there were green peasant militias that were simply interested in um, in in defending their either their homes, their their villages, um, or their area. Um, there were black anarchists. There was actually a, a state created in, in in modern Ukraine by anarchists that um, fought against the Soviets. Um, the Allies from the First World War, uh, the British, the French, and the United States actually invaded um, Russia um, in, in the far north of Russia around Arkhangelsk um, to secure um, military goods so that they didn't get into German hands. Um, in Georgia and in, in the Azerbaijan area there, um, the British invaded and took that over um, to secure oil pipelines. And then um, actually um, several um, columns of Czech soldiers who were prisoners of war in other words, they fought for the Austrian-Hungarians, were captured by the Russians, um, and um, fought their way out of Russia through the Russian Civil War to make their way back home. Anyways, what you have here is a multi-sided, multi-faceted civil war, and the outcome of this civil war is that despite it seems like there was many elements within the Russian em former Russian Empire that were pitted against them, and basically every every allied country were, were against them as well. The, um, the Bolsheviks um, come out victorious from the Civil War and are able to establish um, their government in the uh, Soviet Union there. Um, after they established their well, after they established their government, the, um, the um, communist Bolsheviks are going to um, use a secret police to maintain power much like the Tsar did, okay? If you think about this, there was all those different elements within Russia who didn't really like the Soviets, including the Greens, the Blacks, the Whites. Um, the Cheka evolved into the NKVD and then eventually evolved into the KGB. Um, uh, for example, of the just an example of the influence uh, of the um, secret police in, uh, in in Soviet times there. The current president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, is a former KGB agent himself. Anyways, um, the secret police used brutal, brutal um, methods to keep um, the various elements in the um, Soviet Union um, suppressed. Um, although I've, I've said many negative things here about the um, the the Bolsheviks here, I want to point out one positive, um, and that is that communist rule under the um, um, Soviet Union um, from 1917 to 1921, that's a pretty long time, but I want to talk a little bit about um, the fact that they took Russia, a mainly agrarian, poor society, um, to being a highly industrialized society that actually uh, put the first man into space uh, within about a 40-year time span is an incredi pretty incredible feat. Um, it took um, places like England and, and America a much longer time to industrialize and a much longer time further um, to, to uh, develop that type of technology, whereas they did it in a span of like 40 years. How could they do it so quickly? Well. They used, uh, uh, you know, state-sponsored programs like this. And um, well, let's have a look at it here. They also killed a lot of people too. 
so I guess that's not good. Um, Lenin becomes the, the ruler of the Soviet Union here, um, and the uh, the Soviet economy is basically ruined because they they have they were the Russian Empire was ruined um, by World War One, um, and then uh, on top of that their um, their experiments in how to command the economy from the top down failed miserably. So by the mid 1920s, um, the Politburo, which were the um, group of people at the top of the, the Soviet government there realized that what they were doing was failing and if they didn't change course then everything was going to collapse. Um, so they instituted this NEP or the New Economic Policy and what it did was is it retained some of the core values of communism. Um, so big important industries were still nationalized or owned by the government. For example, steel production, trains, um, the armaments industry. But other things, um, so, uh, people who made um, consumer goods and and um, and uh, in agricultural sectors uh, were going to be, um, let's say, deregulated, and that uh, farmers again could sell their crops where they liked for a profit. Um, small businesses could sell consumer goods as they liked for a profit. Uh, and the goal of this basically was to stabilize and and, and restart the economy but also to industrialize Russia. Okay. Um, and this new economic policy was largely successful in putting the Russian uh, economy back on track um, and industrializing it at a very, very rapid pace until, unfortunately, Lenin dies. Um, and it, after Lenin dies, we have the remaining members of the Politburo, which you have on the screen here. Of course, you probably only recognize one of these gentlemen here. Who, which is in the upper left, that is Joseph Stalin. That is because um, through a power struggle that occurred in the Politburo, he was the only one that ended up alive. That is due to Stalin's ruthless um, securing of power here. Uh, the gentleman in the bottom left uh, is a man by the name of Leon Trotsky, who is promptly um, tracked down by uh, Stalin's henchman in Mexico and murdered with a um, mountaineering axe. Um, the other gentlemen here, uh, Kamenev, uh, Zinoviev, and Bukharin, are murdered by uh, Stalin. And then he has nobody to oppose his power. Um, this um, brings brings us to basically the next phase in, 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 in um, Soviet history, Russian history. Uh, we've gone from the um, we've gone from uh, the autocratic and agrarian and somewhat backward Russian Empire to the um, building of the Soviet Union here that will be commanded and terrorized over by Joseph Stalin um, in our next lesson. Thank you for listening.